This example is uh, at the end of a chapter two. It's number 59, if you're following along in, in the text. And if not, we've written it out here anyway. So again, using the idea of uh, conversion factors and expanding on those, uh, expanding our repertoire of conversion factors to include Avogadro's number and molar mass, and to include ones that we've already used, like percent composition. Um, and ideas of alloy, and we're also uh, an alloy, excuse me, which is a solid solution. And um, practicing our significant figure rules, because you'll see there are two different operations in this question. The question states, uh, how many atoms of copper are present in a piece of sterling silver jewelry that has a mass of 32.24 grams? So a couple of things you need to know before we get going. Sterling silver is actually an alloy. An alloy you can consider to be a solution, but a solid solution. So usually when we, we hear the word solution, we think of liquids, like a salt solution, or seawater as a solution of um, dissolved salts in water. But we can also have gaseous solutions. For example, air is a, is a solution of, of gases. And we can also have a solid solution. So it's, the, uh, it, it's a mixture, but the density is the same everywhere, so it's very homogeneous. And so we call it a solution. And one of these solid solutions is an alloy, an alloy of metals. Sterling silver is an alloy of two different metals, silver and copper. In fact, if, if silver were 100% pure silver, it would be uh, quite simply too soft. So copper adds some hardness there. So sterling silver is uh, in lots of uh, jewelry is made of still sterling silver and then we're told that and I think you could look it up but it's easier to give it in the question as they do here and if this question were on a test I would also tell you what the uh, percent composition is of the alloy now because it's only made of two metals knowing the percent composition in terms of one metal or the other essentially tells you everything you need to know so just careful with this question. You're asked to find out how many atoms of copper there are, but they're giving you the mass percent composition of the alloy in terms of silver. So you say, well, that's fine. If it's 92.5% silver by mass, it's the rest copper, and you're right. We just have to pay attention to our sig fig rules when we figure that out. So um, I think what we need to do first, before we can think about arriving at the answer in atoms of copper, but let's actually, um, sorry, my phone is buzzing here. Let's think if, uh, what, where could I get the atoms of copper from? What information? Well, if I knew the moles of copper, I could determine the number of atoms. Where would moles come from? Moles always comes from mass. So I need to know the mass of copper, then I can convert to the moles of copper and then finally to the atoms of copper. So the question is now backing up to how do I find the mass of copper in this jewelry? It would be pretty straightforward if they asked you for the mass of um, silver because I would just take this percentage of the total. So you see where this is going? I first have to determine the mass of copper. The conversion factors that I'm probably going to be using in this question will include the mass percent composition, so now I'm writing it as 92.5 grams of silver and 100 grams of alloy. I'll probably use the molar mass of copper, and I'm just putting the molar mass of silver there. I'm going to let you know right away that we're not going to use it, but it might be before you start something that you wanted to have at hand. And again, these come from the periodic table. Here's silver, molar mass, and copper is right above it. Um, so just, just handy in case we need it. Just getting it ready so I don't have to go back to the periodic table. Okay, so I think the first thing we established that we need to do is to actually calculate the mass and calculate the mass of copper in this piece of jewelry, which I'm going to call the sample. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to do this by calculating, doing it a little bit indirectly. I'm going to calculate the mass of silver, and then I'm going to subtract that from the total mass of the sample. So that's how we're going to proceed. And so I have 33. 0.24 grams of my sample, which I'm going to call alloy. Okay, my sample is is the alloy. I have 33.24 grams of the alloy times. I know that in 100 grams of my alloy, there are 92.5 grams of silver. When I Calculate this, I'll get a mass of silver and I get 30.747 grams of silver. And I need to trim that back because I can only use three sig figs in this calculation. So there's 30.7 grams of silver in this piece of jewelry. But I need to know the mass of copper. And my mass of copper in grams in this piece of uh, alloy, in this piece of jewelry, is going to equal the 33.24 grams of the sample of my alloy minus that part that is silver, which I just found out. Okay, so I take that difference and that will be in grams. And uh, I get that that is 2.54 grams, and I'm going to add the symbol copper here, okay, because I know that that's what it represents. Now, sig fig rules tells me I'm taking the difference of a number with two decimal places and one decimal place, so my answer has to have the same number of decimal places as the one with the uh, least number here. So I need to round this, and 4 is less than 5, so this is going to stay 2.5 grams of copper. Okay, so now my conversion pathway is going to be, um, I'm going to take this mass of copper in grams. Sorry, I wasn't looking and I went off the page. There we go, back in view. My mass of copper in grams going to convert that to what? My moles, number of moles of copper, right? And I would use uh, my molar mass to do that. And then I would use Avogadro's number to determine the number of atoms. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. I have, I'm going to go off view here. There we go. I have 2.5 grams of copper. And I'm going to use my molar mass of copper. Uh, my molar mass of copper, which I have to find, yeah, to convert to moles. So I want to get rid of my grams of copper and go to moles. My molar mass tells me that in one mole I have 63.5. 5, 4, 6 grams of copper. And then I want to change from, from moles to atoms. And Avogadro's number tells me that in one mole of anything, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Grams of copper cancels, moles of copper cancels, I'll left, I'm left with number of atoms. And I get an answer from the calculator, 2.369 times 10 to the 22 atoms of copper. And I need to I'll just do that here. Trim that back to just two significant figures because of the 2.5 grams. And the 6 will round that 3 up to a 4. And so my final answer is 2.4 times 10 to the 22 atoms of copper. 
And as a final check, that's my final answer box. As a final check, I always ask, does this value make sense? So does it make sense to have a number this large? And we would we would agree that it does because we're counting atoms in a, in two and a half grams of copper. So so yeah, a little bit less than um, well not a little bit but a lot less than than what's in a mole because I only have two and a half grams of copper and in a mole would be 63. So it's less than 10 to the 23 and the answer is in the ballpark of 10 to the 22.